Last week, we started our journey photographing the Arizona backcountry discovery route. We made our way along the U.S.-Mexico border and then to the La Cienegas National Conservation Area where we found a remote campsite. Tonight, we're going to be turning our cameras to the heavens. This technique requires many images taken at a high ISO. This will create a lot of grain in your photos. That is okay. We will be eliminating almost all of the grain when we stack the images. I recommend at least 10 photos to stack. I'm trying to get our camp set up here. The uh, campground we're gonna go to about a mile away was completely full of people. So we uh, went down the dirt road and we're trying to set up a camp. But the ground's frozen, so I can't drive stakes in the ground. So hopefully the wind dies down because right now we can't put the cover on or the insulation, which means no heater tonight. You ask me a long night. All right, don't have much time because all of our batteries are dying and it's so cold out here. So this is what I'm doing tonight. I'm gonna to try a new photographic technique for astrophotography. So one of the problems we have, of course, is how much light you can gather with your camera. And the longer you leave your lens open, the more the stars will streak. So I came across this technique where you use a high ISO so you can get short exposure times. Now that's going to cause a lot of grain in your images. So what we do is we capture a lot of those and we blend them together uh, using a, a camera which setting. I'll show you here in a few minutes when we go into post-processing that helps get rid of the grain. Now I'm going to be shooting over here towards these mountains tonight. And what's going to happen is I'll have to do an exposure for the sky and then I'll do a separate exposure for the ground. Because when I do the sky, the ground is just not going to come through. But when I do the ground, the stars are going to be streaking because I have to have a longer exposure. So now the neat thing is, also because it's cold, I'm going to aim the camera and I'm going to go in the tent and I'm going to control it via remote control. But what I'm going to do right now is pull the battery out of that camera and stick it in my jacket and keep it warm. And I'm going to make us some dinner. A little bit. In these temps, you need to fuel up. Oh yeah, that's some goodness right there. Potatoes, chili, cornbread. Oh yeah. All right guys, so right now what I'm doing is I've got my camera outside. It's in the portrait configuration pointed to the southwest. We have uh, some of the light from Sierra Vista lighting up some mountains on the horizon. I've got Orion in the sky. Remoting to my camera, I'm shooting a series of images. I'm at f3.5 right now. Um, ISO 6400. And then I'm going to um, increase the exposure here so I can try and get the ground elements in here as well. So I'm going to take a series of images to try and see if we can stack them together. Starting off, I added some color tags to each group of photos that I took to make it easier to select them and send them over to Photoshop. In Photoshop, I selected the layers to be stacked. Once selected, I clicked Photo, Edit In, and then I select Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now this is going to take a few minutes for them to move over to Photoshop, so be patient. Since the Earth is rotating, the stars are not aligned. Photoshop has an auto-aligning feature, but with these dark images, it's not going to work. To align my photos, I set the current visible layer to be inverted by pressing Ctrl-I. I then set its opacity to around 20%. I then move that layer to align its stars with the next layer. Press Ctrl I to invert it once again, and then raise the opacity back to 100%. And then I repeat it on the next layer. Next, I select all the layers. Click Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. This may take a minute. Once that's completed, I click Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, and then Median. This averages out each pixel in each layer of the stacks and virtually eliminates all of the noise in this photo. 
I then take the last layer that wasn't stacked. The trees and mountains will appear blurred in the stacked images because of all the realignment. I use a mask on the top layer to allow the bottom layer to come through, which gives me a sharper foreground. There is one more step to take. Let's develop a few more photos and then I'll give you that last step. All right, so I'm just coming in and out of the cold here. So I go out, I position my camera and uh, make my changes to all my settings here wirelessly. So I have a chance to come in here, get my feet warmed up in front of the heater. Ah, There's definitely an easier way to uh, do astrophotography. photography. I prefer to be out there, but it's cold. I don't know if you can hear it, but the coyotes are getting closer. Here I have several short exposures to capture the stars that I put in red, and several layers in orange that have a longer exposure to try and get more of the ground. I will be selecting each of the colored layers separately and converting them to smart objects just as we did before. I'll also be changing the stack mode to medium for each one of those two groups. I'm now using a layer mask on the top layer, which is my ground, and allowing the bottom layer, my stars, to come through. I'll save it in Lightroom. Once it is sent to Lightroom, it will be the photo that's highlighted. I press the number four to give it four stars. That is how I know that that is the stacked photo. I'm now going to cool the sky down a bit. I do this by going to the masking tool and selecting the auto masking of the sky. Then I make my adjustments. I also want to make some adjustments to the ground. To auto mask the ground, create a new mask and tell it to mask the sky. Next, invert the mask and the ground will be selected. Everybody. Good morning from the Arizona BDR. We are outside the Empire Ranch. Uh, it was a cold morning. Mm. It was a very, very cold night. Uh, 22 degrees is what it got down to, so I'm enjoying my, uh, oh, hang on here, get a better grip. Enjoying my morning coffee, trying to warm up here. Uh, so we did some astrophotography last night. Hopefully it turns out epic. I will say this much. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents got me a telescope. I was able to see the Andromeda Galaxy. Last night is the first time I saw it. It was through my, uh, since I was a kid. Through my camera. Hopefully the photos I took of it are going to turn out. We'll see. Tony's back there making us some uh, breakfast this morning. We are going to be tearing down the tent sometime soon here. Once, well, the sun's up. It's starting to warm us up out here, which is great. We are uh, close to the Empire Ranch. We didn't quite make the campsite we wanted to last night, um, but we're trying to get all the batteries recharged from the cold and uh, hopefully soon we'll be on our way. It got real cold last night. The ground and everything around us is covered in a thick layer of frost. This is also a great time to capture some morning photos. So let's take a look at the Andromeda Galaxy. It is about 2,480,000 light years from Earth and has a diameter of around 200,000 light years. To zoom in and focus on the galaxy, I had to start with a wide field and manually focus. Taking pictures at an extremely high ISO, little by little, I was able to center the Andromeda Galaxy, zoom in, and refocus. I would have to repeat this process many times until I was at my full zoom capacity, focused, 
and centered. I then lowered my ISO and started to take my photos. This photo is one of the images from the camera without any stacking. And this is the stacked image. Look closely under the core. You can see a little detail. Most likely, it's one of the spiral arms, the one that's closest to us. The final step is to trim the edges of the photo. Since we're moving the layers, we need to look for the part of the image that is still grainy and then use the cropping tool to trim it away. It's time for us to continue our way on the BDR. Next week, things get real and I'm going to bleed. Will we make it all the way through stage one? You gotta tune in next week to find out. So hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment or two. I would love to hear from you and all of you take care.